Hello everyone, this is Kedar Kottawar working as a design consultant at Systech Solutions. Welcome to the presentation on FGS design. We will be discussing fire and gas system basics and how uh, fire and gas system is used as a risk mitigation system for unexpected uh, release events. The presentation will start with a past incident and some background on use of FGS as a mitigation layer or a protection layer. Then we will talk about the existing industrial standards, fire and gas system, the design life cycle, and study explaining modeling and detector placement strategy. Let's start with the incident. Uh, this is a gas release incident happened at DPC Enterprises in Glendale, Arizona. They had a chlorine release, which led to 16 medical evacuations and uh, nearby community evacuations. This facility repackaged chlorine from uh, rail cars to small containers. The uh, chlorine scrubber at this facility had two purposes. One is to capture all the chlorine that is vented in the operation uh, in the repackaging operation, and second is to produce a sellable bleach. The operating condition for these two purposes were not identical. The op operating uh, the chlorine scrubber as a safety device and a byproduct um, uh, generation unit needs a, uh, required utmost care and had an increased likelihood of toxic release. So let's see what CSB found out in this incident. The first thing that was reported, the PhD did not address the known potential for sending too much chlorine to the scrubber. Second was the failure in effective operator response that resulted in the large chlorine release. Third is the first responder had to drive into the affected area to notify the public and 11 of the 16 people held for medical monitoring were police officers. Well, could uh, FGS have helped us mitigate this release? Maybe gas detection system triggering an automated process shutdown and community emergency notification system might have helped us uh, reduce the severity of this incident. The protection layer diagram is an example of various uh, safety layers in a facility. Preventive protection layers are intended to detect the abnormal uh, conditions and act to prevent hazardous events. These preventive protection layers help reduce the likelihood of loss of primary containment. Uh, in the event of loss of primary containment, it is important to detect the release early to activate the mitigation system and avoid any further escalations. Mitigation layers are intended to reduce the severity of this loss of primary containment. And FGS is one of these active mitigation layers intended to reduce the overall level of risk. Well, this layer is not 100% effective in detecting the hazardous scenarios, but it will help in reducing the likelihood of uh, severe consequences. Detection uh, and then action of this system is uh, it's a complex problem statement to solve. So we will go ahead and look into those aspects. FGS basically detects a leak or flame and initiates a response to mitigate the hazard. It is a continuous monitoring of abnormal situations like flammable or toxic gas releases uh, within the facility. The system is designed to provide early warning after the loss of primary uh, containment to avoid uh, any further escalation of the event. The important aspects that you see here is uh, the detection is important and the uh, action process action is important. The detection elements, so the hardware might be highly reliable, but there is a likelihood that they may never detect the gas release or fire. So relying solely on the hardware doesn't, doesn't guarantee the effectiveness of an FGS. So what is the rationale behind this FGS design and implementation? In USA, there are two regulations applicable uh, to chemical processes. Uh, one is OSHA PSM, EPA RMP. When it comes to detection of events lit resulting in fire, the industry follows NFPA 72 and European norm 54. So these are, does not apply to uh, toxics at all, but, but they do provide strong prescriptive guidelines for, as a basis for the FGS design. But these are not enough since they 
don't have a performance based approach or does not apply to the talk six at all hence more tools and techniques are required so what do we have uh, we have a performance based industry standard that is IEC 61511 used for SIS design for the process industry sector. Using the same underlying principles, uh, the technical report TRAD ISA has published a technical report that is TRAD 407. This provides a guidance on how to evaluate the effectiveness of identified FGS function. Well, these guidelines and principles can be effectively used in conjunction with the good engineering practices. Well, due to the challenges in achieving the FGS effectiveness, uh, we recommend assigning uh, minimum possible risk reduction credit to the fire and gas system. And, uh, we will be discussing the math in the next few slides. Uh, fire and gas uh, design life cycle is limited to the design and, it, and the stages in it. The first, and for, the first thing is to establish the requirement of a, a fire and gas system. Why, why do we need it? Once uh, that may be from your process hazard study or insurance requirement or your local regula uh, regulation needs you to have detection uh, coverage for your release, uh, releases in the process area. So once the need is established, uh, you also need to have a, a philosophy for your organization. Uh, fire and gas philosophy helps you to stay consistent within the organization on all these uh, function, uh, functional designs. When the need is established, you have the philosophy, and based on your study, you, you determine a risk reduction target for the system. You have a target in mind, but uh, when you're designing, we have to make sure that the design meets the risk, risk reduction target. And when we are verifying this uh, performance of this design, uh, there are many challenges that a design engineer face here. Three of those challenges I have listed here. First is understanding the release scenario. It is crucial to understand the release scenario. You can use the simple Gaussian uh, modeling or go for uh, CFD to understand the complexities around it. The second is once you know the uh, details of uh, release scenario, you, you also need, as far as the fire and gas system design goes, you look into the detection coverage, the uh, hardware PFD average uh, number and how effective is the FGS uh, mitigate, like how effectively it mitigates the hazard. So the mitigation effectiveness, uh, hardware availability and the coverage are important as well. Once you achieve everything, one of the important thing is the residual risk you have, it, it needs to be acceptable as per your risk criteria. So to sum up on this slide, the aspects for FGS effectiveness calculation are detector coverage, the safety availability, and the mitigation effectiveness. This slide is about the uh, more about the detector coverage uh, or the detector detection strategy. The overall fire and gas system effectiveness, as referred from uh, TRAD 407, is a product of uh, uh, detector coverage, FGS hardware availability, and the mitigation effectiveness. If your targeted risk reduction uh, for this protection layer is 10, then the absolute minimum detector coverage should be 90%. And this assumes this, the safety hardware availability and the mitigation effectiveness are perfect. However, that is not the case uh, always the safety availability will have some likelihood of failure and the mitigation effectiveness might be less than 100% depending on the type of FGS response. So the detector coverage uh, target needs to be identified during design so that the right number of detectors, the voting architecture, the detector technology and the placement can be done. This slide talks more about the detector coverage when, uh, when what makes uh, fire and gas system more complicated than a typical safety interlock well the safety interlock sensors are usually on the pro in the process line and uh, like you see in the figure it, it is about analyzer uh, gas detection coverage would be 100 percent but if you have a process leak and the the detectors for this uh, gas release uh, would be far away from the point of release so uh, in that case, you have many influencing factors 
the environmental influences uh, and based on the like the wind direction and the geographical area the properties of your chemical will guide the path or will affect the con the gas release contour now in all this uh, with all these influencing factors uh, will the gas detection coverage ever be 100% well it won't be in other case you may achieve a near perfect uh, gas det uh, the detect detection coverage for a specific scenario but that won't be a cost effective option this is important the detector coverage uh, for the overall fgs effectiveness uh, let's see what data says uh, hs the analysis done by hsc uh, of eight years of hydrocarbon release data it showed that irrespective of the type of uh, fgs design the effective detection rate was about 60 percent and it is important to aim can fail to reduce the risk uh, there are convention practices that are carried out to place these detectors. We see uh, detector placement done based on the experience and based on the similar arrangement or similar existing facility. As I said, there are many influencing factors, uh, the nature of release, the environmental conditions, size and shape of the process release, whether do we have ignition sources and what is the acceptable exposure limit for uh, the uh, uh, toxic releases. The next slide I will talk about different types of analysis for detectors. There are two main approaches in determining the detector coverage. The first is geographic coverage. On the left hand side it is it looks at the detector array for a monitored area and calculates what portion of that area can be seen by one detector, two detectors or no detectors. The outcome is in the form of color coded map where in here you see the red color is no detectors detect any leak in that area yellow is where only one detector detects the leak and uh, green is where two or more detectors would detect the leak it does not mention where the leak is going to happen it just geographically says how much is covered on your facility but on the left on the right hand side you have uh, scenario coverage uh, the scenario coverage considers the likelihood and consequence of every gas or fire scenario that could happen in the monitored area. Uh, and once you determine that and have uh, arrays of uh, detectors on site, you run this uh, scenario based calculation and the map uh, you see here is the profile for residual risk. You have the detector, ar detector arrangement and those detector arrangement detect certain release scenarios and it might not detect a few ones. So the residual risk graph profile that you see for the scenario coverage analysis will help you understand which, which direction uh, gas release is uh, yet to be covered. It will help you with the, your detection or detector placement strategies. This, uh, this is completely specific to uh, risk contours. The next slide is about, okay, you have a situation where a, a chemical is leaking from the storage tank from a 2-inch nozzle uh, under 300 psi pressure, 88 degrees uh, Fahrenheit temperature. You, you can use simple Gaussian models uh, like I have here uh, to get the uh, the release contours. Uh, in this case, it's a high pressure, so it's a momentum jet. Uh, you, you will get the overhead view and the uh, side view and this will uh, help you understand okay how the gas cloud would have a footprint uh, in the geographical area or in the in your facility and this would be input parameter for doing your scenario coverage calculations here let's see about uh, for the same scenario let's see if we can achieve a better uh, detector coverage so this, this scenario coverage analysis for detector arrangement is for two out of n voting. The initial uh, detector uh, coverage or arrangement on the left hand side has uh, four single point detectors. One is behind the vessel and uh, three are uh, in proximity of the leak. This is a scenario based coverage analysis for a two out of n voting where uh, minimum two uh, needs to detect the leak for the scenario. The coverage obtained on this initial design is 38%, so this is significantly low. 
uh, let's uh, look at an, a better coverage uh, look at the figure in the middle of the slide uh, we have uh, changed the technology of detectors if you see there, there are three sets of open part detectors and one single point detector is used to cover the leak. So the coverage for two out of N uh, wording is improved to 59%, but it is still far low to uh, achieve a risk reduction of 10. The last calculation that I would show you here is a different strategy. It uses five sets of open part detectors to cover the leak in all possible uh, scenarios. Here the coverage looks good for toward of end voting and it is above the absolute minimum for the overall FGS effectiveness calculation to meet the risk reduction uh, factor of 10. But please note these strategies doesn't apply to all the uh, scenarios needing an FGS. Uh, an FGS implementation is a combination of art and engineering. As far as the risk reduction factor of 10 goes, if the other two factors that is safety availability and your mitigation effectiveness are perfect, then this 92% coverage might work. But you need to be very careful uh, on getting a quantitative value on these uh, designs. So in conclusion, fire and gas system being a mitigation layer and the uncertainties in detector coverage and mitigation effectiveness makes this fire and gas system effectiveness calculation a complex problem statement for us. Second is uh, you have, there are two ways to do this quantification. One is geographic and the other is scenario based uh, coverage analysis. This quantification will help you support the early and efficient uh, detection. The last point I would discuss is when you have the requirement for this fire and gas systems and uh, you're trying to design the most, the, uh, the few important points that uh, you would uh, look for is what is the uh, voting architecture or what type of detector technology I am going to use and the detector counts and arrangement uh, for that specific function. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, thank you for listening to the presentation. If you have any further questions or you may want to discuss further on this topic, please uh, reach out to us. Thank you for now.